Carrie, welcome to my first 2023 Patreon collab, The Golden Age. I'll be sharing clips of the full process in this video, so stay tuned to the end to see the big reveals of all the dolls in the collab. A couple times a year, my patrons and I get together and decide on a theme. Then we each make a doll inspired by that theme, and this time we chose Tudor and Elizabethan royalty. The fashion during that time was super elaborate with lots of satin and brocade fabrics, fitted bodices, and long full skirts. So inspiring. Also inspiring are the many epic movies that take place during this era, including my favorites, Elizabeth and Elizabeth the Golden Age. I've long hoped to have an opportunity to recreate Kate Blanchett in one of these amazing gowns. I ultimately decided on her coronation gown because I was so fascinated with how they seemed to bring this historical painting to life. So again, make sure to stay till the end of the video so you can see the final photos and video of my doll as well as the creations by the super talented patrons who joined the collab. Extra special thanks to them for participating and to all my patrons for supporting us along the way. Let's get started. So I'm working with Ever After High Dolls as a base. I wanted her to be super tall and regal, so I used a Jillian Beanstalk body, but her face is actually a Crystal Winter, I believe. You can barely tell, but she's got sort of a blue-purple cast to her face, as well as a little bit of a shimmer, which was surprisingly easy to cover completely. I chose this space sculpt because Kate Blanchett has a unique shaped nose that some of the more predictable dolls wouldn't have worked with to capture. I was looking at a Spectre Vondergeist or a Headless Mistress. I even almost used to create a monster sculpt. But the main problem I was having is that many of these dolls have a ski slope nose and most real people have a more substantial bridge. I'm really trying to improve on portrait dolls, so when I get started, I wanna make sure that everything's leaning in my favor. I look at things like the distance between the eyes and the nose and the mouth, and the length of the chin, and the size of the forehead, and the shape of the nose. In the first layer, I'm uh, doing the shape of the eyes, but then I'm also adding some shadows and uh, different colors of blues and uh, some tan sort of colors to pull out those features. I'm using some reference photos of Kate Blanchett while I'm working. She didn't turn out looking just like Kate Blanchett, um, really similar, but I'm okay with that because I really wanted her to just reflect Queen Elizabeth I. Particularly with the sort of sallow or porcelain skin, red hair, and the hooded eyes with the no makeup look. There I'm removing some of the work that I've done with an X-Acto knife. I was trying to be very cautious. My muscle memory sort of is to add a really heavy upper lid line or lash line. But with this one, like I said, I want her to have sort of a, a no makeup look. So I'm really trying to be delicate with those lines there. One of my favorite parts is adding the white to really make things pop. By the way, if you're interested in learning how to customize, check out the links that I have in the description box below. I have a $5 beginner step-by-step -step booklet in my Etsy shop. I have two classes over on Skillshare. Uh, you get a free month of Skillshare when you sign up through the link below with no obligation. And I also have lots of rewards over on my Patreon, like a huge re reward library of videos that I've done to, to instruct different parts of my process. I have a tip of the month, a close-up clip where you watch me work monthly and monthly level up lessons where 
I walk through the steps of many different techniques and all of that I put into a library that you can access. For her eyebrows, I'm starting out with a base of just this uh, sort of golden color, yellow. I, I want to say yellow ochre. And then a little bit of brown to shade the eyebrow first before I go in with the lines and pencil. I like to give them their shape with the pastel first and then then shape them up with an eraser, my microwave eraser, and then go in with lines in a couple different colors. I'll go in with the, the dark gold color first and then like a brown and maybe a little bit of a dark brown. All of the supplies that I use are also in a link in the description below. If you're looking to find something that I'm using in these videos, I have a Amazon storefront. If you purchase anything from there, I do get a small commission, but the, um, the link has all of the supplies that I use. And if you click on them, there should be like a little description as to how I use the product and why I recommend it. So that is the face up. I did go back and add a little bit of tweaks and some upper eyelashes because I decided not to adhere eyelashes like I usually do. Uh, so there are some extra touches I did later. So starting on the costume now, I started out using this gold fabric and I was going to make a dress in gold and then I later realized that the photo I was using from the internet was actually um, making it look gold and it wasn't a gold dress because I watched the movie and found out that no, that's an ivory dress. But anyway, um, so I decided to do a, a different version and I used that gold skirt as an underskirt so at certain points it, you can kind of see the little beads peeking out from the dress. Under the corset, I was using this cardboard as a base because it needed some structure. I wanted to give it sort of like a the shape of a cone or a V, the way that the dress from the movie was. And um, so I used cardboard as a base and just sort of shaping it to the body. So I went with this fabric. I've had this for a long time and I always knew that I was going to do something historical with it. So when I saw that it was a very close match to the dress that she wears in the movie and, and in the painting, the historical painting, I was really excited to use it. Starting out with these shoes, I um, used my little slipper pattern. Since you were never going to see the shoes, I just wanted to make some simple ones, but I also adorned them with beads. But I love to make these little slippers. So moving on to the cape, I wanted the it to have some lining so you didn't see the stitching and uh, seams. And then I have this beautiful fur from a store that went out of business. It was really strange. It was a very popular uh, store that sold house home goods, but uh, they had me sign something that said that I couldn't resell it or mention that it was from their store or anything. I, I can't remember what it said, but I had to sign something. So I don't want to say what store it was from, but they were going out of business and, um, they had these samples of fabric for like rugs or I don't know what, but it was a big pack of samples of different fabrics and they were beautiful. I was so excited to get them. And um, this is one of those that I've been trying, wondering what can I use this for for many years, but I found it interesting that I had to sign something. So I don't want to say what it is because the store that it is, because I don't know if I'm allowed to, it's very weird. So now I'm working on the orb. So this is the, the orb that the queen holds in one of her hands. And I like to make, when I give have accessories that they have to hold, I like to make them super light. So using wood as a base is a great idea. Um, this So I'm using this wooden bead and I wanted to um, 
insert something to make the cross on the top, but I, I wanted to make the hole a little bit smaller. So I used some wood glue and this skewer and just glued it in there in the center so then I could make a smaller hole into the skewer to insert the cross that I put on top. So there is the orb and I'll set that aside while I work on the scepter. So I'll paint and add some more detail to that later. Working on the scepter, I wanna just add some beads to each side to create a handle and just a, an elaborate tip to it. And so I'll set that aside while I work back with the orb, adding some craft paint in black I'm just painting it up in black and then adding some gold to some of the other areas. And once I have it all painted, then I decided to do use some ribbon for the areas where um, there's like a stripe that comes down from the cross and then one that circles all the way around. And um, that's where the gems go. So I wanted to just use ribbon as a base. And then I added on, I just used some jewel or some jewelry glue to add on the little gems. Use some craft paint and gold to paint that up. And for both of those, the scepter and the orb, I sealed them with some uh, varnish, some gloss varnish. After I made the dress, I realized I wanted to go back and add these cuffs. In some of the photos, you can see that she's got like a sheer white cuff. And so that was an important detail to me just use some sheer ribbon and I like to light the ends if it's a if it's a non cotton fabric I like to light the ends to prevent fraying. I'm going to work on the ruffle collar I'm just going through some of my lace to choose what works best and I liked this one the sheerness of it and it just made it a little easier to see some of the details at when it's bunched up or pleated. So all I did was um, I used some starch to, so it, to help it keep its shape and then I ironed it with my flat iron and just added a snap to the back and I stitched through it to hold it together, of course. So the crown was pretty challenging. It took me a while to figure out how to approach it, but ultimately I went with a base of this aluminum. This is aluminum from a tea light candle, just the bottom of it. And I've used this before because it's super lightweight. Like I said, I like to use things that are lightweight. If it's going to need to like um, be held by the doll or sit on its head, it's good to have it uh, be light so it can eat more easily hold it. So I use this aluminum a lot. Um, and I used it to just help keep the shape of the, the roundness around the, the head. And I used this gold rickrack to create the sort of rickrack pattern um, of the crown at the top and then just went around it a couple of times. And then later on, I added to the inside as well just to seal up uh, some of the um, upper pieces that I add. Luckily, this rickrack that I'm using comes with a sort of really heavy duty uh, backing tape. So I'm able to just remove the paper and stick it right on there. I end up adding a little bit of glue in certain areas to secure it a little bit better. I add some stitching and so forth, but um, it was an easy way to get started. Doing my lighter trick again, of course, if you do this, please be careful, but this kind of melts that uh, area just to, to make it a more smooth surface. For the upper parts of the crown, um, I'm using this jewelry wire and on the ends of it, I'm curling it up into a ring so I can stitch that onto the crown base to secure it. And this made it a little bit easier to hold the beads that I'm adding to it as well. So I made five different sections and made sure that all the beads matched so that I could stitch that onto the crown and then secure them together.
using the wire was a big help because they're adjustable a little bit so it helps me shape the crown after I'm done. A while back, my little sister gave me a bunch of, she kind of got into jewelry making and she had a huge collection of all these glass beads and some of them are just very precious, beautiful beads. And um, she was just getting out of the hobby. So she gave me a bunch of them and I was really thrilled that I had them because I felt like they really made the crown look a little bit extra beautiful. So once I attached all of those, then I attached them all together in the center, twisting the wire together. And there's the base of the crown. And I added some beads in the front. Um, well, this, this particular floral, floral bead in the front, and then I just uh, painted it with a little bit of gold and added a bunch of Swarovski crystals to a lot of different areas on the crown, around the base and on the flower and the cross that I add to the top. The crown in the photos had these uh, beautiful pearls all the way around it. And I took a lot of liberty with making the crown a little different, but um, this particular part, I really wanted to make it similar. And there's a, there's a pearl, like a teardrop pearl that hangs in the front and then teardrop pearls that go around along the top. And I found these in my stash. Um, I've had them forever and they're vintage. They're, they're just very old. And, um, I think I found them at like a garage sale or something and I knew I would need them someday and sure enough they came in they were perfect I just they're kind of set on wire and I put the wire through a needle and pushed it through to secure it and I did it all the way around and then for her hair um, I really felt out of place not creating an elaborate hairstyle for this one uh, but she really just had her hair down and it was kind of a little bit wavy so I just flat ironed the the reroute. As you can see I added beads all along the bottom of her bodice and there's the little underskirt that I talked about earlier. Ape all put together I added the uh, cords with some tassels on the bottom Even though she can't be seen, the necklace can't be seen with the cape on, I figured it may want to be displayed with the cape off, so I made the necklace. Gave her some pearl earrings. And I did a, a hook and eye closure for the front because I didn't want to have to tie these cords. I wanted them to hang. And here are the final looks. It's at the end, but make sure to stay tuned here in a moment to see all of the dolls that were made by my patrons. They are just absolutely gorgeous and see all their information. Some of them have YouTube channels or Instagram, so make sure to check that out. Thank you again to all my patrons for joining in the collab and for those who supported us along the way. I always have the best time with these collaborations, choosing a theme and seeing what everyone comes up with. You guys never disappoint. These dolls are amazing. Looking forward to the next one, you guys. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope to talk to you guys soon. Thank you so much. Bye.